Southwest 3260 only tired, runway 24 right to line. Hello and welcome to the CAT 3 flight. This is the third flight in the series of the Communication and Airspace Training Program on the Pilot Edge Network. Today we just have a very simple three laps in the pattern, but we're going to be talking to air traffic control. We'll bring up the CAT 3 briefing here. If you haven't read through it, I'd recommend doing so prior to watching this video. It's really straightforward today though, just three laps in the simple traffic pattern at a towered class Delta airport. So we've got our learning objectives, flying the rating. This is the Class Delta Airport that we'll be at, San Luis Obispo in California. If you continue to scroll down, you also notice there's an example script of what you can expect to say and hear. But like all flights on the Pilot Edge network, everything is dynamic. So you need to be able to react accordingly if ATC tells you something that might not be scripted because the script is really just there as a preparation tool for you to use, just so you can have an idea of what to expect to say and hear. Hopefully this video will also help you to realize that there are differences in what the script says and what you're going to see in an actual flight. That's not because the script is wrong, it's just because it's dynamic and there might be another airplane in the pattern, you might have to extend your downwind, and things like that. We'll take a look at that as we get airborne. At the bottom of the CAT3 page you'll see some related material. This is really good information on how to fly a proper traffic pattern, but we are going to go through it real quickly today and we're going to use this graphic right here. This is a standard left traffic pattern. Left versus right traffic patterns have nothing to do with cardinal direction. It all has to do with the direction of turns that you're making. Now before we get into this, let's look at the actual traffic pattern for the airport we're going to be flying at today so we can put this in a little bit better perspective. Here I have the chart supplement, the AFD for the San Luis Obispo Airport. You can find this in those little green books that the FAA puts out. You can find those at your local pilot store or you can find it online in PDF version. There will be a link to that in the description below if you're interested in seeing this for yourself. But this is San Luis Obispo Airport and this has all the information we're going to need today. 212 is our field elevation. That's going to be important here in just a minute. And then as we look over here, TPA, that's traffic pattern altitude, it tells us to see the remarks. So we're going to scroll down to the remarks and it talks about the TPA traffic pattern altitude being 1,203 feet for a single engine. Today we're flying a Skyhawk, so that's going to apply to us, whereas if we were in a multi-engine aircraft, we'd be up at 1,703 feet. In the parentheses, those are the AGL altitudes above ground level, versus the non-parentheses are the mean sea level, MSL altitudes. That's the actual altitude you're going to see on your altimeter, versus in the parentheses, the number is how high you are above the actual ground. So we're going to keep note of that altitude, 1,203, and that is the altitude that we are going to use for our traffic pattern altitude today. Now as we bring up our diagram again for flying the pattern, again a left traffic pattern, and we might get left, we might get right today, we're going to be ready for both, but for today's description here in the picture, we're going to be using a left traffic pattern. So using that number of 1,203 feet as our traffic pattern altitude, we know we're going to depart the runway, and we're going to be on upwind. Now upwind is the first leg, you're going to fly straight out, and you're going to wait until you're within 300 feet of traffic pattern altitude. So that means that once we are above 903 feet MSL, that means the reading on our altimeter, we can begin our left turn onto the crosswind leg. The crosswind leg being a 90 degree angle from the upwind leg. So we're going to make a left 90 degree turn and we're going to fly crosswind. This is where we're going to complete our climb up to 1,203 feet, which is the traffic pattern altitude. And at that point, we'll be paralleling the runway in the opposite direction of which we took off. This is known as the downwind leg. Along the downwind, we'll maintain that 1,203 feet, our traffic pattern altitude, and we'll get a beam the numbers. Once we're a beam the runway numbers, we'll begin putting down some flaps and maybe reducing our speed a little bit, and then we'll begin a gradual descent. So as we descend, our next point is going to be the 45 point off the runway numbers. What that means is if you were to draw a 45 degree angle, it would intersect the downwind at this point. Once we see the airport off to our 45 behind us, that's when we're going to want to begin our base leg. Now in the base turn, we're going to continue our gradual descent, and it's important to remember at every point during the traffic pattern, you need to be able to safely make it back to the runway in the event of an engine failure. So with that being said, it's a good way to be able to judge if you're too low in the pattern if you don't think that with an engine failure you'd be able to make it back to the runway. So don't add flaps in too early, don't slow too early, and don't descend too early. As we turn base to final, we ideally want to be at least 500 feet above ground level, with the airport elevation being 212. That means we want to be right around 702 feet, or higher as we turn base to final. 
As we roll out on final and we deem that we can make the runway safely, we want to get fully configured, ensure we have a landing clearance, and then we can land the aircraft. Now we're going to do that three times today, and we'll talk a little bit about what our options are as we get to the runway, as far as do we have to turn off the runway and taxi back, can we do a touch and go, or what our other options are. Finally, I'll stress it again that this whole traffic pattern can be amended by air traffic control at any moment. The most common amendment you might get on a traffic pattern is to extend your downwind leg. This might be for an instance where tower has another departure to get out prior to your arrival, or there's another arrival in the pattern or just coming straight in or from anywhere that the tower is going to get in between you and the runway. So therefore they have to extend your downwind in order to lengthen the time between you and the runway. But short of any alternative ATC instructions, this is the traffic pattern that we're going to fly until we're told otherwise. Even if you do not receive a landing clearance between your downwind, base, final, you still turn all of these legs. It's not until you get to the threshold of the runway that you would then go around. You should not extend your downwind on your own and you should not extend your base leg on your own to pass final just because the tower has not cleared you to land. You always continue the full traffic pattern until you get to the threshold, until you go around. That's it for the pattern briefing. Let's hop in the cockpit and start getting ready in here. As you can see, the engine's already running, and I'm going to skip all the startup procedures and everything related to the actual aircraft because today we're really focusing on how to fly the pattern and how to talk to air traffic control. I'm not going to focus so much on the systems of a Skyhawk or the specific workings and techniques on flying the Skyhawk. All right, we'll begin by looking at the airport diagram. We're currently parked over here at the west side ramp. So we are north of runway 257 and west of runway 2911. So in the top right, we have our frequencies. These are going to be all the frequencies that we're going to be using today. And it's going to begin by checking the ATIS on 120.6. The ATIS will tell us exactly what's going on as far as the weather conditions and the runway they're using. And this will serve as the first step before we even contact any air traffic controller. So back into the cockpit and that ATIS frequency was 120.6 and we're going to get that tuned here. One. Wind calm, visibility 6, haze, smoke. Sky condition, clear. Temperature 15, 2.12. Altimeter 3003. Arriving and departing runway 29er. RNAV runway 29 approach in use. Read back all runway assignments and hold short instructions. Advise on initial contact you have information delta. San Luis County Regional Airport, ATIS information delta. 1856 Sulu. Windcom. Okay, so ATIS information delta, we'll turn that off for now. And we're going to go back over to our airport diagram now that we know that runway 29er is in use. So we already said we're parked over at the west side ramp. And since runway 29er is in use, we know that we're going to have to likely cross a runway to get over to our departure point because we're here. So we're going to look at our expected taxi route. It's always going to be one step ahead of the airplane or maybe even several steps. So we're likely going to be taxiing via Juliet, Echo, and Alpha to get to the full length of runway 29er. This means we can expect to cross a runway in our taxi instructions, so we're going to be ready for that from ground control. Again, we're anticipating what we expect we might hear, but it's not always what we're going to hear. Maybe they'll assign us runway 25 and throw us a curveball. We need to be ready for everything. Now, if you're starting your flight on the east side of the airport, you wouldn't have any runways to cross, assuming they were departing runway 29. See, so it's very dynamic and every situation is different. We'll scroll back up to the frequencies. We're going to look for our ground frequency at 121.6 and back into the cockpit we go and we're going to tune up ground on 121.6 and while we're here our tower frequency is 124.0 I'm getting that from the same exact chart we were just looking at okay we're going to make sure our transponder is to the altitude mode now I'm flying Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and the Microsoft and prepared products don't talk directly to pilot edge as far as the transponder setting is concerned so you're going to need to make sure that you select that mode C button on your actual pilot client, which is the window you used on the web page to connect to the Pilot Edge network. If you're in X-Plane, that doesn't apply to you. Now, regardless of what simulator you're flying, you need to file a flight plan on the Pilot Edge website. This is a little unusual because you usually would never file a flight plan for pattern work. However, with every single rating on the network, you have to inform the network and the controllers that you are performing the rating in order to get credit for it later. Because of that, go ahead and fill out a simple flight plan with San Luis Obispo SBP to SBP, and then you can just select a VFR flight plan. And the most important thing to do is select that box 13 that tells the network that you are performing the CAT 3 rating. 
All right, so at this point, we're ready to call ground for taxi. Now, this is the first time in the CAT rating series that you are calling a ground controller to taxi because in the CAT 2, which was the first time you talked to a controller, it was just an inbound. But this is the first time we're taxiing out from the ramp with an air traffic controller. But the call is just going to follow our general format that we've used in the past, and that is who we're calling, who we are, where we are, what we want to do, and our ATIS code. Now we'll also follow it up with our first call being this is for the CAT 3 rating. Remember, you always have to tell the first controller you talk to that you are attempting the rating. Okay, let's call ground. San Luis Ground, Skyhawk 210 Pop Echo, West Ramp, taxi for closed traffic, with information Delta, this will be the CAT 3 rating attempt. That's 210 Pop Echo, San Luis Ground, runway 29 taxi via Juliet Echo Alpha, cross runway 29 at Echo. Runway 29 taxi via Juliet Echo Alpha, cross runway 29 at Echo, Skyhawk 0 Pop Echo. Okay, so those are our uh, taxi instructions, and that was exactly what we expected, in fact. So we'll pull this up one more time to show you what we're going to be doing. And we're taxiing from the west side ramp, Juliet, Echo, Alpha, and we have clearance to cross runway 29 at Echo. Now, we don't want to linger once we have our taxi instructions, our taxi clearance. We want to make sure we get moving, so taxi light is on, and we're clear right, marginally clear left with the rampers. And here we go. Now I say you don't want to linger because there might be other traffic that they have holding for us. We are clear right on that taxiway. This is Juliet that we're joining now. And um, we don't want to linger because there might be other traffic they have holding for us. There might be other traffic behind us in the ramp or maybe even someone waiting to come into the ramp because a lot of ramps are often one way in, one way out. It's just the same, just one alleyway. So we want to make sure that when we call for taxi, we are actually ready to taxi. You don't want to be calling before you start your engines um, or any of that. Okay, and then we're going to join Echo here. And lights up for the runway cross. And clear each side. Looks good. And we are crossing runway 29er at Echo. Runway crossing complete. We can turn off the lights now that we turned up for the runway. Okay, now as we approach the end of the runway, we're going to prepare for takeoff here. Now, if you'd like, you can pull off into a run-up area. And some airports have a designated run-up area. Others, you just kind of pull off to the side when you get down to the runway. And if you're ever unsure, you can always ask the tower if it's okay to just kind of pull off the side of the taxiway and do a run-up. But if there is a designated run-up area at the end of the runway, you can just pull off in there yourself. And then you can just call tower whenever you're ready to go. Now the last important thing to note, since this is our first time taxiing out with ATC on ground frequency, is that when you are holding short of your assigned departure runway and you're ready for takeoff, you switch the tower on your own. Now this is the only time you're really ever going to change frequencies without being told. The only other exception to that would be if you were calling clearance delivery and then you were going to be calling ground for taxi. So if you're going clearance to ground or ground to tower, you switch frequencies on your own. Past that point, whether you're going tower to departure, or November, departure uh, to center, to approach the tower, or even, plane. most importantly, tower back to ground, you need to wait to be switched. So once you've, essentially, once you've taken the runway and departed, then you can no longer switch on your own. Unless you're just a VFR departure heading out without getting flight following. That's that's a different story. So here we are, short of our assigned departure runway. That's runway 29er. That's uh, verified. And we are going to switch over to the tower frequency now, 124.0. Now, one last thing I'd like to do before I fly the pattern, just so I have a visual reference point, this is especially kind of important in the simulator where it's a little bit hard to look around. You're either using your mouse or using your, your yoke or whatever you have to look around. Maybe you do have a virtual reality set up. Either way, which, which I like to bug the heading of the runway the right. and the runway heading is 292 so we're going to bug that here just so we always have a really quick reference of the heading of the runway so we've got that bugged and our altimeter is set so we're going to call the tower now i've already switched over to 124.0 that's the tower frequency and the call is just going to be our standard who we're calling who we are where we are and what we want to do. No need to give an ATIS code this time because we already gave that to ground. They already know that we have the ATIS information. San Luis Tower, Skyhawk 210 Pop Echo, holding short runway 29 for close traffic. Skyhawk 210 Pop Echo, San Luis Tower, left close traffic approved, report midfield each time, wind calm, runway 29 clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, runway 29 left close traffic, report midfield, Skyhawk 0 Pop Echo. Okay, so we're clear for takeoff. 
We're going to check the final, make sure that's clear. It appears so. Just because we're talking to an air traffic controller and we're in a class Delta airspace does not omit the requirement for us to always see and avoid and always look out for traffic out the window. So we're clear for takeoff. He clears for left close traffic, which if you remember is the same pattern uh, direction that we were using in the, the uh, graphical briefing at the beginning of the video. And we're gonna set power here. So it's gonna be left turns. He also told us to report midfield downwind. So we're gonna explain what that means here when we get on the downwind. We'll talk more about that. Now I am flying Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So the Skyhawk doesn't fly all that well, but we're gonna do our best with it. All right, we're up and airborne. And now remember, we've got that uh, heading bug here, that runway heading bug, so it's a good reference for us if we ever need it, but we're always gonna keep looking out the window here. Now remember, we're looking for 903 feet until we start that left turn on the crosswind. Remember, it's left pattern, so left close traffic, we're always gonna be making left turns unless we're told otherwise by ATC. We're at 600 feet now. Again, we're waiting for that 300 feet below track pattern out to, which is gonna be that 903 foot range. Remember, track pattern out to is 1203. There's 900, okay. And we've passed 903 feet, so we're gonna be in our left turn. And we're turning to a, we're turning 90 degrees left. That's gonna put us on a crosswind leg. And we're going to watch our altitude here. We wanna make sure we level off right around 1203. The other reason this heading bug is good is because it allows us to kind of know right when we're on that 90. So if we put this heading bug directly on the right side um, of our HSI, then we know that we are where we need to be. And we've leveled off the track pattern out too, which means we're gonna turn downwind now. We're always clearing that turn. I forgot to do it on the crosswind, but uh, we're always clearing that turn before we make it. And now that we're at track pattern out too, we're gonna pull the speed back, I'm oh, sorry, pull the power back just a, just a hair. We're gonna try and hold trap pattern altitude as well as we can. As you roll out on the downwind, we've got the airport just off our left side here, and we are rolling on the downwind now. Remember, tower told us to report midfield downwind each time. So every time now that we're doing doing a lap in the pattern, um, we need to report midfield downwind. And that's just to get the tower's attention, and just in case they get busy, it just kind of pings them a little bit, hey, uh, we're at midfield. And it's just a good time for our landing clearance or extend down when it's kind of a good decision time for the tower. We're a little bit high. We're going to watch our altitude there. And we're about midfield now. We're going to make the call. San Luis Tower, Skyhawk Zero Pop Echo, midfield down on runway 29er. Skyhawk Zero Pop Echo, runway 29er, clear for the option. Clear for the option, runway 29er, Skyhawk Zero Pop Echo. Okay, so we got cleared for the option, which is terrific. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment, but we're gonna be waiting for that 45 degree point. So we're a beam the numbers now. We're gonna start uh, slowing a little bit and I'm gonna choose not to drop flaps yet. We're just gonna pull the power a little bit and we're gonna start a very gradual descent. Now we're gonna wait for that 45. We're not quite there, almost maybe another five or six seconds and we'll be in a, in a point where we wanna start turning that base leg. Okay, we're about 45 now and we cleared that left, uh, left turn. We make sure there was no other aircraft out there before we dipped the wing. And now we're on the base leg. So at this point, we are gonna really pull back power. We're gonna start that descent and we don't want to get below 703 feet, if you recall, before uh, we turn final. And remember, this is all just in hopes of being able to be within gliding distance should we lose our engine. Yeah, we're about to roll out from the base leg, check the final, final looks clear. We're gonna continue right on to final now. So we're at right at 1,000 feet, so we're 300 feet above where we, uh, kind of our, our minimum target altitude. And we'll see how this looks as we turn final. We're gonna start dropping some flaps now, start slowing, roll right out onto the runway, it looks good. So the tower cleared us for the option. And the option is a very standard VFR pattern clearance. And the option gives us the exactly what it sounds like. It's the option to do several things. Those include a full stop, a touch and go, a low approach, or a stop and go. Cleared for the option two zero. So when we get the option, we can actually do any one of those things. So if we wanted to make a full stop right now, we could do that. If we wanted to do a stop and go on the runway, we could do that. Uh, we are going to do a touch and go 
um, just for this uh, pass here, just because it's more, uh, it's just quicker and it's more appropriate for what we're doing. Just some, some touch and goes here in the pattern. Floating a little bit. There it is. All right, we'll check the trim and flaps coming up and set power. Okay, so we've completed one lap in the pattern. Two to go, and uh, the rating will be ours. So we're basically just going to do the exact same thing two more times. Again, it's always subject to traffic in the area. If another aircraft decides to join us in the pattern, or if there's a departure, an arrival, it could all affect the flow of this whole thing. But it's really good practice to do this because you get the repetition of flying the pattern. The pattern isn't just a practice maneuver. It's not just something that student pilots do. The traffic pattern is something that you will use throughout your entire flying career. Whether you're flying VFR or IFR, the traffic pattern is always utilized because even if you're flying an IFR airliner, let's say you're flying for the airlines in a, in a Boeing 737, you are still going to be joining the traffic pattern if you're, say, on a visual approach or if you're doing a circling approach, um, an ILS circling approach. And so we're approaching, uh, almost approaching 900 feet now. We're going to get ready to join that crosswind leg. There it is. We're going to clear it off to the left. I see no airplanes, and we're going to begin that crosswind turn now. Continuously scanning for traffic. And we are at traffic pattern out to now, so we're going to clear that left turn. Looks good out there. And we're going to begin the turn to the downwind. Now that we're traffic pattern out to, we're going to pull the speed back just a little bit, just more of a cruise speed setting. And we're going to watch the altitude. We're again a little bit high. It's floating on me slightly. Settle right back in there at around 12.03, as close as we can get to that there. And here we are once again established on our downwind leg. Again, scanning for traffic, making sure there's no one coming in. Don't put your trust too much in the tower. You always need to make sure you're Number looking for traffic and just double checking all their work. And we're going to check off our left, wait for that midfield downwind point again. Remember, you always want to make sure that you're reporting that when the tower tells you. You don't want to forget about that just because you're two or three laps in. And we're going to report that now. San Luis Tower. Skyhawk zero pop echo, midfield left down runway 29er. Skyhawk zero pop echo, runway 29er, clear for the option. Clear for the option, runway 29er, Skyhawk zero pop echo. Okay, so once again, we're cleared for the option, and once again, we are going to make a touch and go. At least that's the plan for now. Continuing to look for traffic, and we are, oh, we're past the being the numbers now, so we're going to start pulling some power, start slowing up, and we'll begin our gradual descent. As we scan for traffic, just because we're, you know, obviously we're doing our scan before we make our turns, but if we can spot an airplane in the meantime, that'll give us all that more information before we start that turn. And we are going to begin that left turn now. It's clear to the left. Especially in a high wing airplane, the, uh, the heading bug representing the runway is very helpful because you can't see the runway when the wing's down. You can pop the wing up a little bit, but at that point you're, you're losing your turn. So if you're trying to make a sharp turn, popping the wing up is not going to help you very much. So okay, now we're established on the base leg. There's the airport looking good. We're going to continue to final. And again, we're passing through 1,000 feet, right about where we were last time. And we're above our 703 foot minimum uh, mark. So that's right where we want to be. We're just going to start dropping some flaps now. Now, some other things the tower might tell you when you're in the pattern. They might ask you or instruct you to make a short approach. And that is basically just a shorter base to final. That might include maybe turning downwind, turning off the downwind leg to the base when you're beam the numbers. We're a little bit fast here, so we're going to cut the power and throw in some more flaps. Pull the nose up slightly to lose some speed. So a short approach would just be 
to uh, turn off the downwind onto the crosswind a little bit quicker and it might make it so you are kind of rolling out right about here from your base to final. It's something you can always say unable to. Don't be afraid to tell ATC unable. If you don't feel comfortable doing something, if you don't feel safe about something, you need to unable ATC. And that is your right as the pilot in command. And you need to exercise that right in the uh, purpose of safety. All right. And once again, we'll go flaps up, check our trim. The glare really gets bad when I look down there and set power. Okay, so we've performed the touch and there's the go. All right, so that was our second touch and go. That completes our second lap in the pattern. And this final one is our third and uh, what should be last one in order to secure that cat 3 rating. So once again we're upwind searching for traffic off our left since that is our direction of pattern. Also looking forward off our right. Don't be, don't be surprised if tower just randomly will assign you a new traffic pattern direction. For instance they might come over and say uh, tell you to enter right traffic now and then now I say random it's not necessarily random it's not for no reason it would be for again for traffic in the area um, you know there's there's going to be a reason behind it but to you it might be random because you don't have the full picture of the traffic we're through 800 feet now and once again going to clear our eventual crosswind turn and there's 900 and 903 so here we go All right, we're established on the crosswind, climbing through 1150 up to 1203, and we're level there. So we're gonna clear the downwind and begin our turn. Again, this is our last lap. Now I'm saying these numbers, the traffic pattern altitudes, I actually do have them written down. I'd recommend you do the same, since it's a strange number, 1203. Um, and traffic pattern altitudes are often a little bit strange like that. They're, they're usually not just even altitudes. Um, they're usually just kind of random, seemingly random like that. Um, but, you know, they're to give you appropriate uh, separation from, from other traffic and obstacles. So they get it down to the specific foot. And uh, so I've got that written niner, down. Niner, I've got 1203 to make sure that I remember the traffic pattern altitude. I've just got that written down in front of me on my desk. And again, we're slightly high. We're going to begin a slight descent. I'm going to pull the power back to more of a cruise power as we're established on the downwind. Now, one thing when you're flying the um, when you're flying the Skyhawk, you want the airport to be right about two thirds of the way up the strut as you are uh, as you're on the downwind here. So this is a good spot. And here we go. We're gonna make our last and final downwind call. San Luis Tower, Skyhawk zero pop echo, midfield left down runway two nine full stop. Skyhawk zero pop echo runway two nine quit land. Quit land runway two nine Skyhawk zero pop echo. So you'll notice there I mentioned full stop, and that was just kind of a courtesy to the controller. It's certainly not required, but as uh, to, for, for the controller to know that we're gonna be making a full stop, they can plan a little bit better as far as knowing A, we might take a little bit longer on the runway because we might roll out and then we're gonna turn left to right. And B, they can also just kind of plan their other traffic if they have a, let's say they have a Learjet that's gonna take the runway behind us. So, and we're well past, uh, we're almost at 45 now, so we're gonna start that descent. So let's say they have a Learjet behind us. They know that they we're doing a full stop so that they can get us off the runway and they can launch that Learjet uh, right behind us versus having to hold on to the Learjet and not let them depart for a while because we are such a slow little Cessna on the upwind the Learjet would just eat us right up. So it just gives ATC a little bit more planning um, in order to know that we are performing a full stop. They were nice enough to give us the option every single time and um, just to give us that option of if we want to make a low approach or a stop and go. So we kind of return the favor and just let them know that we're doing a full stop this time. We're going to clear that final to the right and to the left. And it looks good. Brown, Nothing coming straight ahead. Near the restaurant information hotel, ready and we are taxi. a little bit lower this time, about 50, 50 feet lower than we've been. We've been turning Alpha base Bravo. to final at 1,000 feet every Bravo. time. Runway one and nine we're at uh, 950 here, but still plenty, still plenty of altitude. Going to start killing some uh, power and getting the flaps out. 
Now, just like we had for the Cat 2, we want a plan for when we arrive. Now, I'm not going to bring up the airport diagram right now because I'm saturated with the uh, with being on final, but we're going to be taxiing back to where we began, over there on the, le on the uh, west side of the airport, our left. So, we're going to plan to taxi down. Uh, there's really no other turn off, so it's pretty easy to, to know where we want to turn off. It's just going to be any left turn. But if you have a specific spot that you want to park or a specific spot you want to exit the runway, um, always have a good plan prior to getting uh, on the runway and getting to the airport environment as to how you are going to get to parking. And that way, too, if Tower asks you where you're going to park, you're not humming, hum humming and hawing. And, and Understandably, in the simulator, you're not going to be as concerned about where you park as you would in the real airplane, where you obviously want to park at your flight school or at the FBO of your choosing. But uh, in the sim, it's still a good practice just to have an idea of where you'd like to park. All right, and we're going to apply the brakes, come to a stop, try to. Uh, Without flipping the airport, uh, without flipping the airplane over, try and come to a fairly expeditious stop. Unfortunately, we missed that taxi. I just couldn't get it in time. Um, so we're going to hustle down a little bit here, so we can turn off to the left. You don't want to occupy the runway longer than you have to. Unfortunately, the configuration of this airport, there's just not a whole lot of left turns, and we need to go over to the west side. So we'll pick this one up here. We actually use the whole runway, which is not ideal. But um, again, if you if you realize that ahead of time, you can think, okay, you know, I really need to put this thing down on the numbers or put it down short so you can catch that first taxiway. All right, now we're going to exit the runway. We're going to fully clear these hold bars here and come to a stop. And we are going to clean up the airplane now. Flaps up and lights off. And now we're just going to either wait for instructions or we can ping the tower and just let them know what we want to do. San Luis Tower, Skyhawk Zero Pop Echoes, clear of runway 29, request taxi back to the west ramp. Skyhawk Zero Pop Echo, taxi parking via Mike and Juliet. You can remain the streak. So have a great day. Mike, Juliet, remain the streak. Zero Pop Echo, thanks. Okay, so uh, as we mentioned on the departure, we do not switch from tower to ground. Remember, ground to tower, you can switch on your own once you're short of your assigned departure runway. Tower to ground is not that at all exact opposite you need to wait to be switched and sometimes if the tower is busy doing other things they might be offline coordinating they might be briefing um, the controllers they might not realize that you have um, turned off the runway so sometimes you have to just politely ping them and say you know hey we're uh we're off the runway now request taxi to whatever uh you, what you don't do is switch to ground on your own because if the ground controller is not expecting you for instance if the tower controller was just planning to go straight ahead or the ground controller is busy um, the ground controller might be confused uh, it's just you don't want to do that without being told to do so we're just going to head right over here this is about where we started and apply the brakes and now remember we are still awaiting the result of our cat 3 test so we are going to get the brakes set. Come on a tower, Niner Niner One Five Hotel, holding short One Niner at Bravo. And we will see if yeah, the Niner Niner One Five Hotel. We get Monster that result. Runway One Niner, clear for takeoff. When calm. Clear for takeoff. Runway One Niner. Now, if he doesn't give us our okay. result right now, we're going to um, ping him and ask what our result of the Cat Three was. And we'll do that now. Send those towers, Sky Zero Pop Echo requests a result for the Cat Three. Sky Zero Pop Echo, it's a pass for the Cat Three. Thank you, Zero Pop Echo. Okay, we've passed the Cat 3. So that was three laps in the pattern at a towered Class Delta airport. I hope you learned something about flying the pattern, but more so learned something about flying the pattern with ATC. That's the main goal here. Join us for the Cat 4. We'll be flying a Class Delta to a Class Delta airport. We'll learn all about departing a Class Delta, and we'll use those Cat 2 skills again as we arrive into a Class Delta. Thanks for joining us today.